1970s when the FDA made it clear that the agency would accept foreign clinical data, there's been a rise in clinical trials being conducted overseas, specifically in low and middle income countries, or LMICs. Clinical trial participants from LMICs may enroll in a clinical in a research study and may later not receive access to a drug of which they helped approve, raising concerns for who really benefits from new drugs. Researchers, pharmaceutical companies, and local governments have responsibilities to clinical trial participants once the trial is over, termed post-trial responsibilities, or PTR. Current PTR guidance documents recommend that responsibilities such as continued access to medicines be transferred from the sponsors to local governments once the clinical trial is over. Yet this is not always possible in resource limited settings due to local governments possibly having differing priorities. This project aims to understand the unique PTR challenges to conducting research in low and middle income countries and to gauge stakeholder interest in providing continued access to medicines. Approximately 20 stakeholders were interviewed, including global health experts, researchers involved in international research, and employees of large pharmaceutical companies. Figure one in findings shows that the top challenges to conducting research overseas include deferring priorities between the researchers and the local community, finite resources and limits to funding, and then lastly, deferring fundamental goals of research versus promoting health equity through health work. The second figure in findings shows stakeholder interest in providing continued access to medicines. There is a general consensus that plans for continued access to medicines should be made, yet the ethical permissibility ranges depending on unique individual circumstances. In the discussion section, considerations for determining continued access were developed. These considerations include first, the seriousness of disease, secondly, other treatment options, and then third, the efficacy and safety of drug, and lastly, finances and ability to pay. This capstone concludes that because no person should be used merely as a means to further the interests of others, access planning, which is the intentional planning of continued access to medicines for all participants that therapeutically benefit, should be incorporated into all industry-sponsored protocols prior to IRB approval. Thank you. I thought your project was amazing. Um, so you um, made a mention in your conclusions and recommendations that you think the sponsors um, should be the ones to help provide, um, you know, funding in order for you know this to continue post trial. And some medications require sustained um, longevity of required use. So funding is going to run out at some point. How do you recommend taking that further in future recommendations? Exactly, great question. Thank you, Peter. So funding definitely will run out. Sponsors can't provide unlimited access to medicines for forever. And that's not necessarily what this project is recommending. Other, this project is more so recommending that access planning should be taken into consideration for protocols to see how well participants in this study population receive access. And I do want to point out that there's a difference between marketability and accessibility. So even though a drug might be marketed in a certain community, if it's not accessible by the population, then perhaps we shouldn't be conducting research in that community. Yes? Um, do your recommendations also apply to participants who are in a control group receiving standard of care who might have therapeutically benefited and did not receive the investigational drug? Yeah, definitely. So that st the standard of care debate is a whole other thing that I am very interested in and definitely wanting to look at. But there might be randomized control trials that are conducted overseas, meaning and placebo might be used as the comparator, meaning that participants might actually not be received to a drug. And plans should be made if the, if the drug is therapeutically beneficial 
for all participants, including those in the control group, to later receive access to that drug. 